Hey guys, it's Jaded. So I wanted to get this video out uh, a lot earlier, but unfortunately, by the time I had gotten my hands on installing the PTR and even knowing that it was up, uh, it had gone down and they, they put it down for two days over the weekend. So I was without video for a while, but I got my hands back on the PTR, got in the game, checked it out, checked out all the patch notes. Um, and I'm gonna give you the rundown, tell you if Barb is now garbage or if you should be worried or any of that, which you shouldn't, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's run down some of the notes that I think are important. Um, in the background, I'm doing some uh, some runs in Act 3, just doing some normal farm routes that I typically do. Um, I have monster power on 3. I think 3 is a bit too low. I'll probably run around 5 um, for actually doing this on live servers, but I was just testing it and getting some footage um, especially if you're gonna do co-op, you're gonna want to crank that up. Uh, so yeah, anyways, let's get into the notes. Just gonna run through some interesting ones that uh, I think people are gonna really like. So, starting with Resplendent Chests. They're actually gonna be useful. Um, they're gonna be based off your Nef stacks. And oddly enough, they're gonna give you a Nef stack if you don't have five already. So that's kind of a weird thing, but pretty cool. Um, they added two new shrines. We're gonna get the Empowered Shrine and the Fleeting Shrine. One gives you, or Empowered gives you resource regen and reduce cooldowns. And it's pretty effective. Um, I, I've managed to pick one up and notice quite a bit cooldown reduction wise. Um, and then Fleeting Shrine, increased movement speed and pickup radius. Gotta love that pickup radius. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're getting those. And we're also getting the XP Shrines back to increase our Paragon farming. So pretty awesome stuff there. Players can now search for damage on off hands. It's been a long time coming for that. I can finally say that's in the mix. Oh, as well as they added just a lot of nice uh, little features to the auction house. Like you can now X out of a specific stat. So you don't have to like close the whole auction house and reopen it to research. Um, they also added a button so that you can find familiar and I didn't test this yet um, but basically if you're gonna want to like check and see how much something's worth click this find familiar button and it saves you a lot of time pretty awesome cast time for identifying rares reduced to one second huge time saver here um, and, and I think I'll show you in the video towards the end when I'm IDing everything I was just picking up everything just to see what kind of stats roll on it um, because they kind of switched that up, which I'll get to in a little bit here. Legendary items now give you that notification, so you get this giant pillar of orangish light, and it has a new sound, and, but it also pings the mini-map the first time they drop, so shouldn't miss any legendary drops. You can really run through all the mobs and not worry about that anymore. And this one's really interesting. Might have a lot more discussion about it. I don't fully know the extent of how it works exactly, but I'll give you the rundown on at least what I know about it. Affixes on items will now roll their level based on the level of the monster killed rather than the item's level. So what monster power has added to the game is if you have it at zero, all the monsters in the game are exactly how they are on live, at least um, level wise. But if you crank it to one, all of the monsters have the same, like, like all the monsters are now level 63, supposedly. So any mob you kill in the game has the potential to drop, uh, say, like, an item level 60. But that item level 60 can roll like an item level 63. I guess the only difference is, in terms of armor, is you're going to lose a little bit of armor, like on the main stat of the piece, the armor stat. Or with weapons, you're gonna lose a little bit of DPS. So really, this is gonna bring the market. Uh, well, it, it's just gonna spam the market with a lot of really good items. For example, they even added. Uh, well, they changed the stats that can roll on offhands, on rings and amulets. So for rings, example is you can now get six percent crit uh, crit chance. Uh, for amulet, you can now get ten percent crit chance and one hundred percent crit damage, as well as eighty all resist. So uh, yeah, a lot of craziness there. Offhands that can now get 10% crit chance, just like shields. So there are, there are a few stats they've kind of boosted, but uh, I mean, I, I saw an item level 60 helmet with 6% crit. So, you know, these lower tier 
pieces that before used to be junk and no one picked them up can now have really good stats. So I guess the only difference is, like I said, it's going to be the armor. And that's not really that big of a deal. I mean, obviously it's a factor, but um, yeah, I mean, you might want to start picking up these low level items again. And something that go along, goes along with that is no items below level 58 will drop in Inferno. So no longer are we getting those junk 52 legendaries and whatnot. So, you know, the whole Affex thing rolls on the monster level is really interesting because now people are able to farm act one if they want. I guess the difference is, as far as I know, the item level 63 stuff doesn't drop as much still. I could be wrong. They might have changed that. As far as I know, they haven't. Um, so Act 3 is still the place to go until we hear otherwise. But, uh, you know, if, if you want to just like switch it up a little bit, get a little change of pace, you check out Act 2, do some Vault of the Assassin and whatnot. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting. Next thing, Shrines will now buff all players that are within the radius or within the same level area. And this one's just really nice for co-op, right? If you do co-op, which potentially you're going to do a lot more often uh, with this patch, with the upcoming um, Infernal Machine farming, you're going to probably do that with you know, a group of four people. So you just pick the shrine up, everyone in the area gets it, no longer is it like the first come first serve. So that's just something that's really bothered me for a long time. I'm glad they changed that. Um, and then Neth Valor stacks are now restored when you rejoin like a game that you disconnected from. Um, so if you've ever had shoddy internet or had to deal with that, it's no longer going to be an issue. But uh, yeah, those are just some of the interesting ones that I pulled from the patch notes. If you guys want to check out the full patch notes, if you haven't yet, I'll have that in the description for you. Um, now, they also did a bunch of class changes. I'm going to specifically talk about Barb. I play Barb. I have the most time invested in it. I honestly couldn't tell you about the other classes. Um, really, all I hear is complaining on the forums. Can't really go by that. But uh, we're going to talk about Barb here. So there's been a lot of controversy before we got to see the PTR if Barb would still be viable with Warwind um, because the Run Like the Wind tornadoes got their proc coefficient really like heavily nerfed uh, from what we could tell now from just going in playing just not changing that much in terms of skills uh, obviously in the in the content in the background here I have some different skills but uh, when I first got in I just checked it out monster power level you know not touched first off monster power level zero completely a cakewalk um, I think anyone and everyone's going to be able to complete Inferno now, especially if you're buying items on the auction house, uh, which is probably going to be even cheaper now with all these items, like, you know, boosting up the market. So Monster Power Level 0 doesn't work. You have to crank it to at least 3. I found that 3 didn't work the best. Um, somewhere around 5 to 7 is probably going to be where I'm sitting at. If I'm doing co-op though, you might want to go 8 or 9. I don't think 10 is ever going to be worth it, except for the Infernal Machine Farming. And I'm going to do a video probably discussing Infernal Machine Farming a little bit more. Uh, just go into detail because it's a lot to talk about. And maybe I'll make like a guide or something so people can uh, understand that better. Because there's a lot there. So um, yeah, I, I liked it around 5 to 7, somewhere in there you're going to look for. Um, if you're doing co-op, one of you can run Warcry. If you're doing it with another Barb, of course, one can run Warcry, and you can run either Rend or Overpower um, or, I guess, anything else you find interesting. But uh, the new Rend rune that decreases run speed is actually pretty, pretty cool uh, because now it works on champions and rare packs. So, like, you know, things that would run away from you, you could now just pop that and uh, it stops them from running away. They've even tweaked a little bit where mobs that do run away get hit by Rend a little easier. So you might want to run that in, uh, in uh, co-op. Another thing is with the ring coming out from the Infernal uh, Machine Farming, it has a very interesting proc on it. I'll put it up on screen so you guys can see. These, these were a couple that uh, I caught on a stream. These basically have four random stats. They have 35% XP. Um, and then you get a pick like your uh, main stat. So you can craft either strength, 
dexterity, etc. And then it also has this really interesting proc, and that is the Hellfire damage or whatever it's called. Um, and it's not like it doesn't have an internal cooldown from what I could tell. It doesn't proc off of Whirlwind, um, so you have to use either like Frenzy or Bash to proc it. So a lot of people switch to Frenzy with Maniac um, or really just Frenzy with anything once they get this ring because you're going to like just proc it a ton. And this thing does like up to five minutes. Actually, I don't even know what it can do up to because I believe it scales off of some type of damage. Um, I think it's unclear at this moment what it's scaling off of, but it does somewhere around three mil to five mil damage. And I think it's AOE, so it really ups your damage a lot. And uh, I can see a lot of barbs now using Frenzy. But, uh, you know, overall with the barb, I think it felt, at first, it felt a little awkward. Um, you know, you're gonna feel that when you jump in, but if you put up the monster power level, I think you're gonna feel completely normal. It's gonna be okay. Everything's everything's okay, guys. Everything's okay. Barb is still pretty strong, if not, you know, very, very strong, very similar to what it was. Um, and then something else I noticed just really quick is you have to spam Battle Rage a lot because uh, Whirlwind just doesn't drop your Fury as much as it used to because that kind of got switched up. So like it only does not, it only takes nine instead of 16. So you gotta, you gotta spam your keys a lot more. Um, so I guess that's a nerf. <laughs> Anyways guys, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna be uh, checking out the PTR some more. Um, hopefully getting out one of the Infernal Machine guides, maybe when it goes live. I don't necessarily want to do it when it's on the PTR, uh, you know, put effort into doing a guide and then they switch it up or something. Um, but we'll see. If you guys have checked out the PTR and noticed anything, or maybe I missed something important, or maybe there's just something in the patch notes I missed that you're really excited about, leave it in the comments and uh, I'll check it out. That's gonna do it though, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.